going to pass over to Daryl to make an introduction to uh, this more open discussion with uh, a range of city leaders. I have to start by saying that Kumari Selja, the Minister of Housing and Urban Poverty, was all set to come last night uh, from Delhi, but literally had to cancel at the last moment because of commitments in Delhi, which is a shame. She was very keen to take part in this discussion, uh, but it's unfortunate. Uh, it just gives those of you who are here more time to talk, and we have really extraordinary representation. Darrell has been a um, fellow traveler in this project, I have to say, for the last six months. Uh, he comes with enormous authority, not only as the former uh, resident editor of the, uh, India, the Times of India, but also someone who's passionately written uh, about cities over the years. And as you see from uh, the CV, he's now the chair of the Forum of Environmental Journalists. And he and I will uh, chair the session. But perhaps you might start with an introduction. Uh, thank you, Ricky. And I think Jerry has, in fact, set the tone for this afternoon's session. Perhaps take uh, participants a step back. And we're reminded, I'm sure many people in the room are familiar with the James Thurber cartoon of a man very guiltily sneaking into his home very late at night, hoping that his wife doesn't notice. It's very early in the morning. He's dead drunk. And the cartoon, I'm sure the architects would love it. The cartoon shows his wife towering over the entire house, looking down very uh, angrily at him as he's sneaking, trying to sneak through the front door. In these one, two and a half days that we've spent here, I get the feeling that the wife, the, the, the force outside urban issues has been neglected. Uh, we are in a very self-congratulatory mood about cities and about India's economic growth. But the fact remains that 70% of the population remains in the countryside. A recent survey showed that 77% of all Indians spend less than 20 rupees, 50 US cents a day. So we should pause and think of what the Prime Minister, not perhaps of his own volition, because of the force of public opinion now, has been talking about inclusive growth. And when we talk about inclusive growth, we must talk about inclusive cities. And I think Jerry and so many other speakers have talked about that need in these two and a half days, how to include everybody in our cities, not exclude them. We are in this very city, tried to evict pavement dwellers in 1981, went to the Supreme Court, which laid down some law. There are still attempts by politicians and others to disenfranchise slum dwellers in this very city, saying that they should, of course, you cannot deny them the vote, but they must go back to the places where they come from and vote. They have no place in this city. You've heard of Delhi's gated communities, literally gates in communities. That is all forms of exclusive growth. And I think we should be moving away from that. The very first day of the awards, we had the governor of the state. The governor of, of um, Karnatak lost his job along with the chief minister, sorry, when he was chief minister of Karnatak along with the Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh because they had turned their backs to the countryside. And in the McKinsey report, which Vision Mumbai, I quote verbatim, they said in 2003, November 2003, that Chandra Babu Naidu, the Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, turned Hyderabad from a sleepy backwater town, words to that effect, into an IT hub. Election six months later, he's out of a job. So I think in all our talk about cities, let us not forget the countryside. I think the worst indictment of the Indian government today is the fact that in the last 10 years, 17,000 farmers have committed suicide. The worst epidemic is in this state itself of cotton farmers in the Northeast who are being hit by the neoliberal policies followed by the government. So let us by all means talk about cities, but I hope that all the mayors, and the chief ministers here will talk about inclusive, humane growth. Ricky has set these three questions for all the participants um, of this afternoon session. The first is, when you came to power, what were the key issues that you confronted? The second, what constraints did you find in the carrying out of your duties? 
And the third, what would you like to do? What would, what would you see or what would you like to change?